Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode 14 of 13 Sentinels Aegis Rim. Uh, we're going to be jumping straight back in, and... You know what? Yeah, let's do a battle. Anytime the battles are available, I do like starting off with those. Uh, I just feel like they're sort of a good way to get back into the groove of things. Um, we may, at some point, go back and revisit some of these ones without the stars that we didn't get on the first time around, but I feel like we have most of our team pretty well rested. Oh yeah, look at these guys. They're actually maxed out, but they're not brain tired yet. Is that because we did the Sentinel upgrades to them? Yes, it is. Yep. So we actually get a third combat out of them. So we can bring them if we want to. I'd much rather have them get a chance to relax. So we do need Shinonome and Sekigahara on the team. Let's take everybody out here. Let's see. Shinonome and... I'm on it. Okay, well, that's a good... Uh, first and second generations only on the team. So, if we're going to have those two, let's have uh, anybody that's currently ready. on break. That gets us up to four. And then it's going to be from here, if we have to choose people that are comparatively tired, let's see if we can pick the ones that are the lowest level. That's always been a good ride for us. This is how I play almost every RPG, by the way, is um, going through and trying to keep most of the characters semi at the same level. There's certain games where it doesn't work out that way. I'm like, I don't ever want to use this person. But anytime I can, I like to keep a, 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 wide, a wide roster. I think, you know what, a, an example of the opposite of that is like XCOM especially the original XCOM, Enemy Unknown or whatever it was, uh, back on the PC. For those games, I would really just level up the guys I liked, and if they died, then I was just really screwed. It wasn't a good strategy, but by God, it was mine. Let's take a look here. Level 15, and first and second only. Oh, so actually, I take it back. I don't actually have any options. Let's go. If I want to go out with a full squad, this is the full squad. Now, if I invest in reducing these guys' brain abilities or brain fatigue... Okay, actually, he's all set. Then I can get another one. Oh, she's all set as well. Okay, that's good. And she's not all set. So I could drop, I think it's 11,000 because I'd have to put in two points to it. But I'd rather upgrade some of these guys. Yeah, I can't upgrade the hyper condenser any further. Uh, extends Demolisher's Blade's range and number of attacks. So, yeah. Let's upgrade his Demolisher Blade. Okay, that feels pretty good. Um, by the way, do I know anything about the incoming enemies? The modified shield guys. So we want, um, when the modified guild shield guys show up, what that always means, they're going to come in with a crowd of guys around them. Maybe those guys also have armor, but we are going to need something that's going to, uh, usually attack a good amount of people. So let's see what else we've got here that can do that. Leap attack is pretty good against that. Demolisher Blade is always so good, though. Now, we could unlock composite ceramic armor. If we do that, we'd have to take away one of his abilities, and I gotta say, EMP surrounding would be the one. Because it's, it's the one thing in here that's not upgraded at all. So I think I will. We're going to unlock this. We're going to unequip. Oh, maybe I don't do it this way. Yeah, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to equip composite ceramic armor. We'll put it right there. But fear not, we're definitely not taking off Demolisher Blade. We're going to equip that in place of EMP surrounding. And then we're going to upgrade Demolisher Blade because I really like it. Uh, we cannot upgrade composite ceramic armor, but that's going to give him a lot more defense, uh, at least against weak attacks. And we might be back to him. Let's take a look to see who else we've got. Anti-ground multi-lock missiles. That sounds like exactly what I would want for him. The only trouble is that we've actually done a lot of upgrades on the abilities that he already has. The anti-defense, anti-air defensive flares don't sound super useful so far. Well, actually, let me take that back. Oh, hello to Caroluna. 
And uh, hello to Caroluna, Innertooth, and everybody raiding over. You are joining us right at the beginning of episode 14 of 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. Caroluna had a great time listening to your Space Engineers stream. And yeah, the, the, the drawback that you were discovering to having a ship, but not necessarily knowing how close to capacity it is, that is something that I have, how close to capacity the cargo containers are. That is an issue that I have had in that game myself. I don't know if there's a mod for it, but it's one of the reasons that my terrestrial explorations tends towards wheeled vehicles, because as far as I can tell, a wheeled vehicle never gets so heavy it cannot operate, and that's not always true of the flying ones. So yeah, I, I've been right there with you. Um, ooh, that force cooling device. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna unlock anything new for him. I think what we're gonna do is, we've got lots of people with Demolisher Blade. Let's get his anti-air air defensive flares up. And... I'm gonna do his, I don't know, EMP surrounding? Yeah, yeah, let's get that up. All right, uh, working on down the line here, we've got Juro. Juro, now sentry gun, Boy, sentry gun was an odd choice for him. Plasma arc fusion cutter. Welding tool deals heavy, heavy damage to a ground kaiju, ignores armor, and slows movement. Wow, that sounds way better. You know what I don't use very much at all? Guardian. And I've put a, you know, like a couple upgrades into it. It's maybe one upgrade. It's not that great. So let's go ahead and unlock this. And I'm going to equip it. Whoops. I'm gonna equip it right there in place of guardian. I'm gonna upgrade it at least twice. Probably more than that, actually. Carolina says, oh, I have several examples of that uh, in Space Engineers. One of my own design and the rest are store-bought. I, so you've been doing like missions and stuff as well that I just like didn't pay any attention to when I played and clearly probably should. So I want more multi-rocket missiles. Yes. Yeah. Let's upgrade that at least once. All right, and then we've got Fuyusaka. So, oh wait, she also has the plasma arc fusion cutter. Wow, I've not used that at all on her. Let's upgrade that at least once. And then for Shinonome, we can do... Yeah, see, she's got a way better guardian and a better sentry gun as well. Um, does she also have the sentry gun? Yeah. So we can throw out a couple sentry guns, but I'm going to upgrade her shield emitter. Now, if you look down at the bottom right, we've got like 38,000 points, uh, and that's where we're going to go back through and do some sentinel upgrades. Yeah, her sentry gun in particular is very expensive, so I'm kind of thinking that we should do a... Yeah, let's do a generator upgrade for her. And then for probably Fuyusaka as well, because she's also got that sentry gun upgrade. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that. And then you know what? Let's actually upgrade the sentry guns on both of them as well. Let's upgrade that and go over to her and upgrade the sentry gun on her as well. There's another 3,000 in the bank. Now for Juro, we just got him that plasma arc fusion cutter and... I think I want to upgrade his fire control. Now, for the G1's mobility is, I think, one of the most important things. Yeah, the actuator, I've already upgraded his once. Let's, uh, yeah, let's spread around some speed upgrades. And, yeah. Okay, because the G1s, they can't fly, they can't really jump. Uh, it's very, very helpful to have them be able to, like, run a little bit further. And I've still got 2,000 left. Is there anything that I want in particular for their upgrades? Yeah, you know what? Let's uh, dump another point into Plasma Arc Fusion Cutter. All right. I think we're ready to get started here. Carolina says they are, may not have been there when you played, depending on how long ago that was. That is possible. Also, Caroluna, I need to learn more about, like, 
I never programmed buttons to do things in the world of space engineers. So like having a button that would like extend an arm or start a drill or something like that, I always just did that very manually with the um, number keys and it was very clunky. And that it, I only sort of thought about after I had sort of fallen off. Wait, I really should have come up with a better way to do that. I had to learn how to program buttons in that game someday. And first we gotta fix uh, this battle. about Ogata, he has a very, very sort of like, uh, a very fragile ego. Virtually any challenge to anything that he ever Don't says, it's like, chances. he just goes off the deep end. So, because we only have G1s and G2s, there are no flare torpedoes. That is a G4 special. So, I think that what we're going to do, since we know that some enemies are coming down over here, let's start moving our G1s into position. Gonna now. get this moved in here. Number ten. Oh, and now. let's lay down some. Uh, what's it called? Uh, if we can deploy any drones, I don't know if we can, and also the uh, sentry guns. So let's go to uh, what action, I guess. And yeah, we can lay down some sentry guns. Let's put one over here. In my experience, the further apart the sentry guns are, the more likely they can, like, have a crossfire effect where they are hitting multiple enemies at, at, the, at the same time. Now for Shinonome, we're just going to grab her sentry gun ability, and, yeah, we're going to put this more or less up here. Uh, like here. Need help. Don't waste nope. any chances. No room for hesitation. My turn now. Unbelievable. Okay. Oh, okay, just waiting for everybody fast. to come down. So we do have, I can see one of the shield guys in there, but as I suspected based on the description, lots and lots of little drone guys and lots of little flying drone guys too. Oh, Mia. Oh, Mia has resubscribed and thank you so much for the resubscription. Also, um, uh, Chivalry resubscribed between episodes. So a big, big thank you to Chivalry as well. Now, me is saying happy anniversary. Is this a particular an anniversary? It could be. I really don't remember. But it's uh, 21 months. Mia, thank you so much. Uh, Carolina saying hello to Mia. Okay, just want to make sure that I'm not uh, missing anything. So EMP Attractor will actually do really well across these guys. There's nobody else coming down just yet. So let's see if we can make sure to hit as many as possible. Right. Yeah, knock them all down. No point over and then... This. Yeah, Demolisher Blade. Just Come on. wipe them all out. God, that's satisfying. It's satisfying no every single time. Um, now, the anti-air defensive flares aren't going to be any good against them now that they're on the ground, but we can do a cool leap attack here. That work? Man, they've got new apps 
Exos models out too. If we don't stomp them out quick, they're gonna be a real pain in the butt. Okay, I can't pause. There we go. Yeah, so thank God for the sentry guns because there was a period in time there when everybody was on cooldown, but fortunately the sentry guns were firing off these big blue blasts of energy. And me clarifying, it is our sub anniversary. Well, very, very much appreciated. Um, yeah, at some point we'll talk about yesterday, which was September 1st, 2021. Uh, I don't think that in the middle of this combat I'm going to be cogent enough to address uh, all of the events that we might want to. So during that little cutscene, we got some upgrade. You can tell they're upgraded the blue guys here, and those are the shield generators. Now, individually, I don't think that they're that dangerous, but they will provide extra defenses to everyone around them. Uh, all of their friends anyway. Don't waste any what next? What's the plan? Yeah, okay, so we've got a crew coming in here. So Let's who see. do we got? Let's move Kijiyama kind of over here, get him ready to deal with those fellows. And let's move you over here or so. Or, or, based on where he is, do we want to just go punch this guy or this guy? Yeah, these guys can't have any good Don't heart, any uh, good intent. So let's... Yeah. Here goes. Did that do it? Next. Number 12? Oh, unbelievable. Ought to be used to fights by now. Die already! He's a little bit yeah. wasteful that, I mean, it's capable of so much more damage, that but why leave oh, anybody on over. the field? Why leave anybody unbothered here? Yeah, you can continue moving, and everybody else is good. Right, I can lay down another sentry gun, but I'm feeling pretty good about our current level of sentry guns. What can I do? Ground piercing rocket launchers. Oh, oh, they have rockets coming in. So th see those green rockets coming in? I want to stop that if I can. Arm mounted machine guns can assist with that but I'm not in a good position yeah, for it. So let's try to move around here. Number 13, I gotta think. What do I do? Action, machine guns. Now I can shoot that one down. I'd, I'd prefer to hit multiples, but let's not make perfect the enemy of good here. Okay, I'll make it work. All right, he is basically gonna be in position. And Shinonome is... Yeah. Yeah, multi-rocket launchers just aren't a good pick against, like, individual rockets like this. And I'm not even sure where this guy's going. I'm not sure... Oh, we can... No, we can't. I have no idea where that one's going. It looks like over here. And I'm not too worried about it, I guess. Maybe if I throw down a Guardian, it will actually absorb, you know, uh, it, um, draw some of the missile fire. Let's do this. Deploying decoys. What can I do? Oh no, what happened to the green missile? There was a green missile up here, remember that? I don't see it anymore. Oops. All right, well, in that case, let's just uh, continue moving up here. Not, not, actually, I'll take it back. Not too close. Get, like, right there. Number 13. I guess life oh, yeah. comes at you fast. Oh, God. Okay, so lots of flying guys, and so far, everybody else is kind of on break. So, I think EMP Attractor is is a great choice for a position where I'm not. Let's get I'll away. Yeah, we're gonna move a little bit away. Number 12, moving out, okay. I'm gonna move slightly further away because those big red, those bright red circles, yeah, that's the explosion radius of the drum mine. So, hold I on a second. Comes at you fast. Keep moving, move to like here. Just trust me on this. Okay. What now? Now, EMP attractor, yeah, again, uh, one guy was too close, this guy's too far away. Turn off that, or, Hmm. Ought to be a lot of thoughts here. Now. Okay. Now EMP attractor basically all these guys. Knock them down and hopefully disable that. 
charge attack you're getting ready to Try do. Again. Okay. What now? Yeah, so they're already knocked down, or at least most of them are. However, this is still going to do damage, and all of those red bars you see there, this should kill them outright. I'm right here. Got him. You like that? What now? Okay, so these... Yes, they did come down. Wow, that is a lot of blue guys. Oops. Don't let up. Uh, hold on. There focus. we go. To ground kaiju. Wow, what a fantastic ability to have against uh, just a squad of guys that are purely up in the air. And he... Ground piercing, heavy knuckles. I don't see anything that can whack them when they're up in the air. He'd be pretty good against them with the anti-air defensive flares, but the trouble is he is really in the What's wrong the position. Plan? So, let's uh, try to put those movement upgrades to, to good use. Number 11, moving out. Okay. Okay, we're gonna do what we can in terms of weapons fire. Got it! Cut you down! Don't waste any chances. Yes, yep, yeah, right. Do EMP flare right there. Oh, how was that? Nothing special. No point overthinking it. Okay. Demolisher Blade would be awesome if I was much closer than where I am. Now, it's not bad because it is going to mess up that armored drum mine, but I would way rather. I'll try. Let's see if we can get you in there. I know that there's a lot of red circles there, Number but... 10, what next? I think... I think... What, boy, this... Uh, if this goes wrong, it's going to go real wrong, because they are charging up. But I'm optimistic that we can destroy them before they explode. Yeah, yeah, let's wait for them to come down. Okay. Do what it. I'll try. Oh, look at this EMP attractor. Oh, that's gonna take down every single one of them that just came in. Come right here. Yeah! Is that all you got? I gotta do this. I'm trying to decide if the EMP uh, weapons in this are a little bit overpowered because it knocks down flying kaiju it appears to stun uh land or ground kaiju and it stops them from when i say stunned not only does it stop or prevent them from moving but it also causes them to like lose the ability to shoot it basically turns them off for at least a few seconds of real time I and that's incredibly potent it worked i beat the kaiju i can i'll take them down quick okay um yeah, I want to make sure that this situation over here doesn't get out of hand. So, put on another guardian that would distract them, or a shield emitter. Kind of like shield emitter, especially if it's going to help. Um, what's his face there? Deploying decoys. Thanks. What's the plan? The plan is that big helicarrier that came down, Terra Carrier, whatever it's called. Uh, I want to stay inside the blue circle for sure. Okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to get, like, right here. But yeah, attack the Terra Carrier first. Good. Good. That ought to be used to fight by now. Oh, it did. <laughs> he left in there and did zero points because of their ceramic armor. Womp womp. All right, well, they're not going to like this attack nearly as much. All right, just making sure we can get both of them. Wait, what sorcery is this? Wait, wait, what? Why did that do zero damage? What am I dealing with here? Yeah, I know it's armored. That was Demolisher Blade. That should have cut through that. Yikes. Okay. Um, well, let's give this Arc Fusion Cutter a try. Armor piercing. 
is armor piercing better in any way than ignores armor? Because I feel like ignores armor is by far the superior choice. Okay, okay, so uh, the shield guys are clearly at work. That's okay. that's what I'm picking up. So, uh, new plan. Go rush attack that guy, please. Come on! Take it! That's what you get! Don't waste any chances. Oh, wow. Okay, we have a whole bunch of new guys who have come in here as well. This is... Like, we've seen the shield guys kicking around. This is the first time that they were this effective at neutralizing attacks, which mostly means that I think I was accidentally doing things correctly before. So, is this the closest? That's a drill fly. That's an Apsos guy. So, that guy needs to be very dead. There we go. How was that? Target Throw down another shield emitter over here. How do I? Yeah. How far can I throw a shield emitter? Not quite far enough to get Ogata in there as well. So let's move at least a little bit. I like, uh, wait, how many of these guys are in the air? Oh, actually, most of them, I think. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Let's uh, into air defensive flare them. You're not going anywhere. I guess life comes at you fast. Okay, he is actually out of EP, and he's actually he's also taking some damage. Not a lot, so I'm not too worried about it, but we've got to identify... Yeah, that Apsos guy has got to stop. Oh, look at all those. Look at the uh, missile bloom that it just fired off. Yeah, these uh, machine gun fire should do literally not nothing. Yes. Yes. Wow. Oh, my God. Guys, th these shield generator dudes have really messed me up. Lesson learned. Um, yeah, so I can't do that. I can EMP surrounding, and this is going to knock out... Most of these dudes, I do see a, an incoming green missile. Yeah, let's try to get that as well here. I may not be able to damage them with their shield, but I can stop them. I'll make unbelievable. I'm acting like an amateur. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I'm just trying to get in here. Sometimes when there's a lot of guys in very close proximity, it's like, how do you... There we go. Now we're cutting through those shields. They ought to be used to fight by now. Let's do this. Take it. Nope, not a, good, not a good thing to leap attack. That was not very effective at all. Okay. I have, I think, neutralized... It's actually somewhat difficult to see, but I do not see a shield on this green guy that's down on the ground. So let's give another roll with Plasma Arc Fusion Cutter. Just watch. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, that was much better. 16,000 damage. All right, can I get most of these guys? And yes, I do see the shield guy in the background over there. I just, uh... Alright, so, yeah, these armored gladiators with their ceramic armor. That's what I've got to punch through, so... Demolisher Blade. All day, every day. Now, multi-rocket missiles are not going to do anything against that guy because I don't think they individually hit for as much damage. But anti-ground piercing rocket launchers... Oh, I'm not in range. Well, I could do it over there as well. 
Okay. Yeah, we're definitely gonna have to move her somewhere. Wait, where's the... There's one more enemy over here, isn't there? Yes, he's just obscured by a big energy boost. All right. What do I do? The two G1s over there are going to be able to handle that enemy G1 without too much difficulty, so let's start moving my artillery up over here. I don't know if Rush Attack is going to do very much damage, but I do think it'll shove him. Oh, yeah. Okay. So, I think these guys are on the ground. I think they are. Hold on a second. They are. Yeah, sometimes tilting it down a little bit. There's a lot happening sometimes on the screen, even for such a simple art style. But um, you can see that they are on the ground. So, let's hit this. Attack land. What's the plan? What's the plan? Of. Wow, that's a lot of missiles <laughs> coming directly into his face. Um, everybody, no, everybody over here is not dead. Yeah, we punch that gladiator away and tackle him. I'll try. Okay, so he's actually very low on energy. Ogata is. So i'm going to just focus on moving him and let's see if we can get him a little bit over here he'll have a little bit of time to recharge and then we'll decide what to do with him when he arrives can i get both of them i'm sure i can i'm sure i can yep Oh, that might, that might stack all of its damage on a single enemy. It might only ever be one attack with a very, very high output. Okay, so we're going to get behind him for this uh, incoming attack that you can see. Didn't do any damage, but it got us out of the attack. So we do have multiple missiles coming in. We should have... Oh, actually, probably leap attack is... No? can't hit him with that. It'll get us out of the way of the missiles for sure. Yeah, let's let's just get behind him. A at a minimum, that'll Take stop this. the missiles from impacting right where he is. I'll take them down quick. Oh, yes, please. Yep, this will take out all the missiles and hopefully do some damage to the flying down, carrier. Enemy destroyed. Unbelievable. I'm acting like an amateur. Demolisher Blade should finish him off. Senseless. And what is this? What, oops, do do? what is this circle happening down here? Oh, that's my base. All right. Just want to make sure it wasn't more dudes. I think we're on our very last. No point overthinking it. Enemy. So let's uh, get my moving just now. in case. Yeah, he's actually got nothing he can do against this because he is out of energy. So we're What's just gonna plan? have him no recharge. That's a lot of fire for a city. It, when your Sim City starts to look like this, you feel a little bit worried. We push them back somehow. These fancy upgraded kaiju are no joke. It's a vicious cycle. We're stuck in an arms race where we can only win by improving our own sentinels. I managed to analyze the new model of Abzos. It's not just the shields. Their auto repair nanotech got a major boost too. Seriously? I was just thinking it was weird how long they were lasting. If we don't counter them with EMP equipment, we won't stand a chance. 
Having less direct offense isn't ideal, but if we don't disable them, they'll get out of control. Even then, we've already bought a lot of time. It can't be that long left. All right. How much more time do we need for this big Save the World program? Well... <laughs> Did we do it? Oh, good answer. Thanks, Miyuki. I dislike ever taking any damage in a game like this. I feel like it should all be avoidable. Every time you see a red bar down there, it feels a little bit like a loss. That's a lot of sentinel damage. I'm very grateful for the S rank, but that's that's a lot of sentinel damage. I know it's only 9%, but it didn't need to be that way. Mm, no. All right, let's go. So this will actually be the, the last round, and I'm gonna throw out a prediction. I'm gonna say that once we hit 100% story completion on all the characters, I think there's gonna be at least one more battle, if not a series of battles, that are going to unlock at that point. And that's just... I just cannot envision that they're going to allow you to do all the battles before seeing all of the stories. It's just a prediction. Uh, whoa. What? Wait, what? Okay, no, it should be normal. Sorry, I went to do event archive. All right, I've got two mystery points. Let's also see what's been upgraded. A Sekigahara comes from the distant future of 2065. Natsuno Minami um, shifts to 2025 to get to the UFO, but is attacked by Ryoko Shinonome there and gets left behind in the ruins, unable to find a way home. Minami changed the registered pilot of Sentinel Number 17 on the Sumiri Bridge. At the same time, BJ erased his own mind in order to free space for Sentinels of Number 17's log data. For the sake of BJ, who entrusted her with Sentinel Number 17 and its log data, Minami makes up her mind to face the kaiju. Let's check out this thing from Shinonome. Shinonome's story is who we're continuing, by the way, so ears on this. Ryoko, Sh Ryoko Shinonome comes from the future, the destroyed world of 2064. Ever since the battle in 2064, her memories have been getting clouded. As her feelings towards Tetsuya Ida fuel her desire for revenge, she tenaciously seeks the culprit behind the incident. Unless she regularly takes her medication, she suffers an intense headache and amnesia. Yeah, and I mean by regular, by regularly, it makes like every seven minutes or so. Many of the first year students call her Shinonome Senpai. Senpai, defined as someone who precedes you in an organization, is used as an honorific here to show respect to a senior or superior. This is often used at school or places of work. That's a good um, description. And I like, like it's, it's better stated than my very limited knowledge would be of it. Due to the Sentinel infection incident, she ends up being forced shifted to Sector 4 and questioned by the police of 1984. Whenever Shinonome sees Shu Amaguchi, she feels a strange surge of jealousy or affection. She comes to realize that his eyes and behavior are just like Ida's. Okay, BJ. While transferring all logs of 2188 from Sentinel number 17 over to his storage, BJ deleted his own AI in order to free up enough space. It's very sad. A transceiver used by the men in black suits. Its range is comparatively limited at 1.2 kilometers. I love that there's no detail in this game too small to warrant a codex entry. Like, it's a walkie-talkie. We, we kind of get it, yeah? <laughs> but here it is. Fourth generation Sentinel Armament shoots laser beams from both arms intermittently. To make the intervals between each burst shorter, it sacrifices some precision, but since it can fire many lasers in a wide area, it is often used to keep enemy forces in check. Fourth generation units are the only Sentinels capable of using laser weapons, the arm-mounted pulse lasers being one of them. All right, and... Oh, wow, wow, okay. The medication error that Ryoko Shinonome found in the nurse's office that contained the following details. Iori Fuyusaka, nanomachines anchored, memory transplant at attempt number seven. And yeah, like, what memories do we think they're trying to transplant to or from Iori? 
And the most sensible answer would be um, Ms. Morimura's, because our understanding, pending some like shocking reversal of what all of the information has said, is that Morimura and Iori uh, are the same person. Uh, more than a minute says, I'm so grateful for you to play this. Otherwise, I don't know. I wouldn't know how to stand. <laughs> how to stand as a woman. Uh, Ryoko Shinonome, memory separation progressing, third phase. Like Juro Izumi, giving personality formation measures. Oops, oops, oops. Um, and then there's nothing else there. Chopsticks for two. Chopsticks for a married couple. Juro Karabe and Megumi Yakushiji use them for dinner. They have a cute Sakura design on them and are made out of ash tree, a hard yet supple material. Oh my god. If, if anybody gave us, like, custom special chopsticks, I would feel so bad because I just don't think that I would know how to use them or care for them properly. Student ID for Sakura High School, Iori Fuyusaka dropped this on her way to school when she bumped into A. Sekigahara. After Sekigahara lost his memories, he finds the student ID in his pocket and realizes that it belongs to Class 1B Iori Fuyusaka of Sakura High School. Although Sekigahara recognizes Fuyusaka's face, he can't remember how he knows her. I have to say, I do not happen to remember the way in which he, like, bumped into him, but I will take this game's word for it. Okay, I've got two mystery points. Do we have any that will teach me how to, like, sit as a woman or, like, run as a woman? Probably not. And I don't think that this game would be a reliable source for that. Let's learn about Tetsuya Ida. Like, we know certain things. What do we know about Tetsuya Ida? A, he's adult Shu Amaguchi. Number two, he's in charge of the special investigations unit. Three, in the future, he designed an android modeled after a 15-year-old high school student that he was in love when he was that age, and he decided to not only precisely replicate her physically, but also to transplant memories into her so that she will believe she is that 15-year-old high school student, and then also made use of an AI to manipulate her emotions. So yeah, we know a whole bunch about Tetsuya Ida. Tetsuya Ida is the substitute teacher assigned to Ryoku Shinonomi's class at Sakura High School. He is actually a member of an unofficial organization who forces Shinonomi into battle. Ida is the director of the Special Investigations Unit, a government-affiliated, or they are government-affiliated spies. He serves as an advisor to an anti-kaiju defense team and helps Morimura gather members for their team. Back when he was a student, he supported Tomi Kisaragi on her singing live streams under the screen name F8. Oh, that's right, we did know that. He used to wear glasses and came off as a studious, serious young man, but he tried to act cooler in high school to catch Kisaragi's attention. He was in love with the deceased Kisaragi, so in order to revive her, he developed androids at Shikishima Industries in 2100. He transplanted the past Kisaragi and Tamao Karabe's AI into Androids, but he was in high school in like 2065, wasn't he? Like, how old is this dude? Um, anyway, it was believed that Ida died when he stayed behind during the 2064 Kaiju invasion. However, he was actually still alive and took Shinonome into custody when she was being interrogated in 1984. Which, again, like, if he's in 2100, uh, it's so complicated. It's so confusing. Um, Mia is practicing her stances in front of a mirror. Can't you just stab them into people's eyes? Oh, the, the chopsticks, the custom sh chopsticks. Is that how they're used? Carolina sees nothing unusual here. No, you wouldn't see anything unusual at all if you got stabbed with chopsticks. And then Mia says, I bet sitting would involve wearing a too short skirt and crossing my legs before sitting so as not to give the world a free show. <laughs> And uh, apparently there was a scene that I missed. Oh, 426. There was a scene that I missed that apparently, uh, I think it was um, Force called it out and I had like completely missed it. I, I forget which episode it was, but I did not look back to see what was um, shared by the animators. Let's learn about 426. So what do we know about 426? 426 is a prisoner number 
for most of the game, we have believed that 426 is Juro Izumi. But as of the most recent episode, we started to at least open the possibility that the characters in the game are mistaken about 426 being Juro Izumi, and it's simply the first personality that they knew 426 by, the first body or whatever. So let's see what the game tells us. Oh, and look at that. It's a completely shrouded figure. 426 is the prisoner number of an escaped criminal from the future. His real name is Juro Izumi. He's already dead and currently exists as a replication that is based off of the memory information written onto Sector Zero. He had previously been researching ways to download memories from the Interlocitor and how to get into the production line of the Demos code. He escaped confinement to transferring his own data into an android that looked like Tomi Kisaragi. The Kisaragi android that 426 was using as his body got destroyed during the battle against the Tamau Karabe android in 1985. He then took over the Tamau android's body and managed to escape. This is, this story is like if all of the Terminators had time machines, which we know that they do if you watch enough Terminator movies, but also had the ability to steal each other's souls and forcibly transplant each into each other's bodies. Like, as though it wasn't complicated enough. Okay, let's bounce out to adventure, and we're going to do a story. We're going to uh, jump back into the life and times of Ryoko Shinonome. Seeing Shuamaguchi somehow reminded Ryoko Shinonomi of Tetsuya Ida, causing her to recall an important past event regarding Ida. Yes, and again, we know something that she does not, or, or is may only just maybe starting to suspect, Tetsuya Ida and Shuamaguchi are the same, like, genetic person at different points in their lives. <laughs> in their uh, maturity, physical maturity, if not emotional maturity. Easy. Take your time. Do you know where you are? I am... Answer the question. 1985. I know what you're going to say. I'm fine, all right? I see. I just forgot to take my pills, that's all. There's a 99% chance that during this conversation she will need to, like, gulf down more pills. It wasn't a dream. Morimura. She's been modifying personalities with nano machines. She wants to change both me and Iori Fuyusaka into different people. I can't believe what Morimura says. Number 14. Number 14 is my sentinel. Run away? Why do I need to run? So that was advice that Kisaragi gave her, and rather cryptically too, like, hey, you need to run away, but didn't expand on it beyond that. Fuyusaka and Kisaragi, class 1B, Yakushiji and 1C. All of the compatible girls are first years. <laughs> so Mia is taking note of uh, the nurse here. Uh, Hello to Groomfy. I hope that you're having a nice... Oh my god, you guys, it's Thursday. Tomorrow's Friday. I'm just going to pause for 15 seconds to say what a week. What a week this has been. Um, for, for a few different reasons, but here in the United States, we're very fortunate to be headed into a three-day weekend. I am looking forward to it so much. So I just wanted to take a moment to celebrate that because holy hell am I looking forward to it. The coordinates for shifting through time. They're set in 40 year intervals. So we can't travel freely. Okay, so I can talk to Morimura about the gate. And I think she's going to tell me that it's still locked and we can't time travel. These pills are hard to swallow. But it's the only way these headaches will go away. A picture of 426. He calls himself Ace Hagigahara now. But he's gone into hiding. The one that ruined the Sentinels. The disaster that will destroy the world. If we don't capture 426, there's no way we'll be able to withstand the invasion. Mr. Ida. He didn't die in 2064. 
He helped me when I got here. How could I... forget something that important? It... This game hasn't been too deep or serious into it, but there is a particular type of horror to having your memories either lost, just sort of like unraveling and fading away, things that you know you should remember, but you no longer can, or as one of the things that's been introduced as sort of a plot device in this game, having your memories actively edited. There's another game that we'd like to play uh, someday on, on stream that does, like, like one of the main game mechanics is about like editing people's memories. And you're not time traveling, you're just changing their remembrance of what had occurred. And it's a game that is sort of been on the list for a while. I'm looking forward to it, but we will cover that at a later, at a later date. About Mr. Ida. Where is he? He's been missing ever since the battle in 2024. You don't remember? Oh, My boy. Head. Oh, God. It hurts. Okay, before we pop the pills... Take those when your headaches start to get bad. The medicine is a bit strong. You may experience some temporary side effects. But don't worry. Your memories will return quickly. I can't go on. Oh, crap. My head feels like it's splitting. This should make me feel a little better. Okay, so let's ask her about the gate. She's going to tell us that it's closed. We're still unable to time travel. I already know that. Just tell me when it's fixed. Are you all right? Well, you just saw me eat like an or like enough pills to fill up an entire orange. So, how do you think I'm doing? You should get some rest. You don't need to worry about me. Oh, okay. So, I guess we should check this. So, we're in nurse's office too. I Oh, we can't go there until we have surveillance footage. So that's a whole different situation. So we're going to go to class one hallway and talk about compatible girls. But then we're trying to get to Juro Karabe. Or alternatively, there's an ult there's a different path on the staircase. So yeah, let's see what we can find out. Bye, everybody. Where are you going? Stop following me. Kiruna says... Uh, that he's going for his second shot tomorrow, so if he disappears off the face of Twitch tomorrow, that'll be why. Yeah, um... It wasn't a dream. Shit. Morim Hold on. Hold on, let's think about compatible girls. I don't see them. Okay, um, Caroluna is specifically talking about the second, um, vaccination shot. So, first of all, congratulations to Caroluna. Uh, secondly... Yeah, uh, as I've shared in a few different points on stream, it was the second shot that hit me particularly hard. I've also heard that this year's flu shot in the United States is, uh, it packs a real wallop. But in my experience with the flu, probably way less than the actual flu. So, yeah, we'll be going to get that as well. So, I've already talked to them. Um... I've already talked to her. Where am I trying to get to, do you think? Yeah. Um, let's go to the staircase. Let's see if we can get onto this other... Oh, we've got on the staircase, but also by the vending machines. Let's head to staircase. Okay. Look, it's Goto-senpai. Oh, it is. Uh, he's so hot. Yeah, he's with me, ladies. Oh, okay, so I've got to have some sort of conversation with the compatible girls. Tell me, Kis... Kisaragi-san, can I talk to you? <gasps> Goto senpai Is there something I can help you with? Anything at all? Yeah. Do you like sweet senpai? <laughs> Oh, no. Oh, my head. Uh. What do you do when you're doing that? 
I'd rather not you say. You just tell me to run. Do you like sweet senpai? No, oh, no. What, oh, what sort of women do you like? Go on, no. ditch him. I. Oh, well, so what am I thinking about 426 he about? He calls himself a Sekigahara now. Oh, but no. he's gone into hiding. If I show his picture to the compatible ones, maybe I can figure out who he came into contact with last. I'd rather not say. Oh, hold on. Morin, uh, I have to take my pills. Well, I... Nom, 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 nom. That should make me feel a little better. Okay, so Marin is asking what kind of game is this? Boy, that is hard to answer. Uh, but I think that Caroluna's explanation of its summary is the best that we've got going, where he says that this has visual novel elements for sure, but also mech battles. Uh, Marin is saying, oh, strange, it looked really interesting, but I'm not much interested in mech battles, so yeah. Uh, and Caroluna is also saying, and butts. Uh, Marin is saying, I do like how they're casually using an honorifics despite being in English. Yeah, um, I actually, I don't know. I'm I'm cool with both. Um, what what? Uh, no, this isn't dubbed. It's just sort of like redone in English. Um, but I'd also be cool playing lonesome, playing solo. I might, if the option is available, have done this in Japanese, but we did try to do one game that was just like the audio was all in Japanese and it didn't play well on stream because it made it impossible for viewers to follow what was happening unless they were actively reading all the subtitles. So around that time, I figured, you know what? If there's English voice acting available, we'll probably opt oh, for that. No. All right, let's get out of here. What? Oh, what sort of so I can go to the cafeteria well. or if I go the other way... Wait, neither of these is for the cafeteria. I can go to the staircase. Let, let me go see what's in the other direction. Because uh, Miwako is doing God's work by just keeping Goto hey, distracted. Look at that girl with Goto-senpai. That's Chinonome-senpai, right? The one from the rumors? Yeah, her. I guess she got hurt in some accident. But... Why is she with Goto-senpai? You don't think she's... his girlfriend? What? No way! <laughs> oh wait, I have a new thought. I don't see them. Okay, no, she wants to go talk to Megumi, and I don't want to do that right now. Let's go to the vending machines. I can't go on. Holy shit. My head feels like it's splitting. Mia, I hope that this isn't how your migraine medication works. It's empty. That was the last of them. I need to get more pills before it gets worse. The nurse's office should have some. I'm out of pills. I need to get more from the nurse's office. Okay, so... Oh, wait, I just took the last pill. Hold on. <laughs> now I'm now I'm on a track that I've already been. So... Can I... Yeah, so I can jump back. I've actually never done that before, but it, it remains an option if you get off track. Can't go on. Okay, well... Head... I'm not taking the pills. So uh, cold. So sweet. I can't get enough. Oh... Uh what seems to be the matter, young lady? If there's something troubling you, I can try to help if you like. No, thanks. Uh, I suppose it's to be expected, looking like this. Okay, um... So, what... What if I just leave without taking the last pill? drink. I can take my pills without it. I'm not a child anymore. <laughs> oh. Okay, so there is a fail state where if you don't take your pills... On. My head feels like it's splitting. Okay. 
Uh, let's see if we can just leave. Nope. So. So cold. Oh, what seems to be the map? Okay. Uh, and we can check this out. And I'm about to pass out. Okay. So here's the possibility. Maybe I need to have more pills before I can get onto this track. Like maybe this, even though it shows the arrow here, isn't available. I don't know, like, maybe there's something more that I need. Usually the game is pretty good about, like, here I had to unlock both Strange Feeling and Mr. Ida to get there. But maybe what I need to do is go back to Staircase, and then we can go forward from there. Oh. Oh. Alright, we have to go back to here. Alright, so let's distract Goto. We're gonna come up here and talk to them about the being compatible girls. Tell me, Kisaragi. Kisaragi san, can I talk to you? <gasps> Goto senpai! Is. Yeah. Do you like sweet senpai? So, what's up? Right, well. Has anyone suspicious tried talking to you recently? Uh, besides you? Do you like sweet Damn, sometimes? that's suspicious. No, so, no. let's ask her about running away. Oh, We've already heard like, this, so we're just gonna like blast through that. No. And let's see if we can get to, um... Shit. We can't go there because we need Juro. So, let's try to get to the staircase. No. What sort of women do you like? I don't think she goes directly to the cafeteria. I think, yeah, there's a, there's a stop off the staircase. All right, so now I'm on staircase. How do we get here? Wait, what's this? A posting about club member recruitment. That doesn't concern me. <sighs> also, Mia was asking, can you play a female character with a normal fucking voice? I... <sighs> Hold on. But I took my pills. Senpai, are you all right? Who are you? Come on, Senpai. It's me, Shu Amiguchi. Amiguchi? I don't know you. Leave me alone. Senpai. I've never seen him before. But then... Why does he seem so familiar? Oh, hold on. We've got to take some pills. This isn't right. I just took some. You should probably go to the nurse's office. I'm fine. I just need to take my pills. It'll go away then. Better now. So, okay, so what did I do last time? I got into a flashback with him, and so I need to do something that's not going to the flashback, which probably just means stop talking to him. I, no, I, I cannot remember if I've said that. Um, I think that Yuki has a pretty normal voice. I guess they're done selling. Unfortunately, we finished up her story, oh so... My head. It hurts. Mia may not get to hear her very much anymore. Uh, let me see how far I can make it without taking the pills. Oh. There you are. Kisaragi-san. Why are you still chasing after Sekigahara? Oh, right. You might not know, but... But you have to capture him to fix the Sentinels. And he's 426. Is that right? You knew? Yeah, because you flippin' told me. I don't remember that. Is Morimura doing something to you? I can't go on. My head feels like it's splitting. I'll also note for, like, uh, Marinda's benefit, uh, the pills thing is very unique to Shinonome. This is not something that any of the other characters ever had to worry about. It's empty. That was the last of them. 
I need to get more pills before it gets worse. The nurse's office should have some. No, we don't want to go back there. You don't remember being in the ruined city together? A ruined city. Damn it. Irritating lock. Doesn't seem possible to force a connection. Ryoko-san. Just like I thought. I knew you'd show up here. There's nowhere left to run, 426. I'm 426? Who did you hear that from? I saw the access logs. It was you, Eisaki Gahara. The program that infected the Sentinels. It was created with 426's ID. Looks like someone left some foolish evidence behind. Uh, no! Don't move. The shift radius is off. I haven't set the input, but the shift's still being executed. Get back. I won't let you mess things up again. Ryoko-san, you need to stay out of this. No! Oh, they're gonna get out as be some sort of like a fly equivalent. Damn it. We shifted. And to the wrong place, too. Now there's others involved. Not good. My location's going to be tracked. I need to delete the gate's logs. All these kids, because of him. Time to end this. Okay. Um. Yeah, cornering 426. So we're uh, clearly going to go after him. Is she correct? Oh, wait. Tommy Kisaragi, one of the compatible. This just wasn't your day. And really no comments? For, oh, so I guess she doesn't know Ogata or doesn't know that he's one of the compatible boys and would probably know that Miwako isn't compatible at all. So that's why she doesn't really, like, know them. No commentary. Ryoko-san. I've got you cornered now, 426. It's time to pay for what you've done. Oops. Because of you, he's... You... You're still going on about Ida? I should kill you right here. <laughs> then do it. Shoot me. Go on. I'm serious. I'll do it! The trigger's locked. I'm the registered user. It won't shoot me. I'll take you on myself. Really? With those injuries? Besides... What are you doing? Empty. Like I thought. <sighs> Your condition's gotten worse. How long has it been since you've taken them? Guess I don't have much choice. I've got those pills too. Go on. Take them. You're not gonna trick me, 426. I don't know what you've been told. But I'm not the one who infected the Sentinels. I'm not 426, Ryoko-san. We never lived too far apart. Ever since we were kids. Wherever you went, I followed. My big sister, Ryoko. Don't you remember? Hey, come. Please, take them. 
This hideout isn't safe anymore. You need to take the ones outside and go back. Understand? I need to get out of here. He's not... 426? Then... whose fault is it? What's going on? I don't... understand. Wait... I need to know... <laughs> I like the idea that the story wasn't complicated Stop enough. Me, John. We have an emergency. So they added a character who has like recurring, aggressive, progressive amnesia all the time. <laughs> And then we know a, we know some of what happened for her then because we played through Kisaragi's part of that story. She spent several chapters of Kisaragi's story unconscious, and then at some point wakes up and I I don't remember if we know what she did after that. So yeah. So uh, for Marinda or anybody, um. Yeah, I don't know if she threw it away or dropped it because of her tremors or whatever. I think she probably threw it away. But, um, Marinda, the story is told from the point of view of every character you see here. And they each have their own story. And what's interesting is that they each have sort of their own, um, some of their own gameplay mechanics as well. Yeah, we finished Yuki's story, so I don't think that Mia gets to hear her anymore. Uh, yeah, let's jump back in. Sure. Easy. Take your time. Do you know where you are? Answer the question. 1985. I know what you're going to say. I'm fine, all right? I see. I just forgot to take my pills, that's all. All right, so... Oh, I have a new thing that I can think about. Hey, Sekigahara. Eikun is a year younger than me. And a childhood friend. How could I think he was the culprit? Well, I feel like 426 could be any number of people. So, what do you think that we're trying to get to now? The coordinates for ship. Yep, we heard that. Fuyusaka and Kisura. Heard that. These pills are hard to. Heard that. If Aisaki Gahara isn't 426. Then who's the one that messed with the Sentinels? Okay, so we have no more bright bars up at the top right. So let's check our map. Where do we think we're trying to get to now? Oh, no, we still don't know anything about Juro Karabe. That may mean that there's a conversation that we need to have about it. Um, the other possibility is to get up here from the empty cafeteria. Yeah, so... Let's just ask around the Class 1 hallway. Maybe Juro will be available and we can learn about him. But otherwise, we will aim at going to the empty cafeteria. My head. God damn it. It hurts. Well, we're going to try to get as far as we can before she right? runs out of pills. I can't walk in this state. Okay. I need to take my pills. Should make me feel a little better. Where are you going? Stop following me. Also, Marinda saying that he happening? thought that uh, Sekigahara was a location, not a person's name. Yeah, over the course of the game, and with so many characters in this game, even I, you know, will forget some. Like Ogata is like Ninji Ogata. I just congenitally cannot remember that guy's name most of the time. Let's talk to uh, Megumi this time. Megumi Yakushiji. Because she's like full into Juro. So if we're trying to look for a... Can I talk to you? For a lead. She seems like the, the best person. I guess there's really nothing you can do about it. Do about what? 
you know, your condition. Oh, okay. Well, good talking to you, Megumi. Oh, there he is. Look, it's Goto Senpai. He's an icon. You're all right. Uh, I'm relieved. So Student council Not elections again, are senpai. coming up. He's running for what? president, right? I've already really? asked you to stop Amazing. making fun of me. Smart I'm Kurabe. and handsome. Jural Kurabe. The only thing a girl could want. Goto Senpai. Apologies, Kurabe. You can go ahead. All right, so let's think about Juro. Yes. Karabe? But he's Izumi-kun. I don't understand. I bet Renya Goto knows something about this. I can't go oh, on. Oh, boy. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Okay, let's ask him about Juro. Juro Karabe? Explain. You have the wrong person. That's not possible. I wouldn't mistake him for someone else. There are certain things you're better off not knowing. Damn it, just tell me. Juro Izumi doesn't exist anymore. He's Juro Karabe now. His mind could not withstand the battle. He had to be turned into someone else. There is no chance of recovery. Okay. Izumi-kun. He has the same symptoms as I do. Yeah, the mapping system, system, uh... Um... Caroluna. And hello to Jap. Caroluna had said that this is sort of like common in visual no novels, but I think it's really cool. It doesn't tell you what to do, it gives you like a hint. Sorry, I just I just really like based on everything that just happened in the last 20 seconds that the prompt is talk. We finally meet. You're Ryoko Shinonome san, right? Who are you? I'm Juro Izumi. And I need your help. We're going to save the world. With that robot. Okay, so uh, now it looks like I would have hit a block, but I may be able to unlock uh, like her next state. And then we got some meta chips and so forth. Okay, the Vanished Hero, we did it. Complete Shu Amaguchi's A Spectre Reborn event, but we've already done that so we can unlock it. Um, Jab was saying you must be pretty close to the end. Uh, as we, if we just sort of exit out here, if you look down there at the bottom center, we are 68% through the combat encounter so we know that we've got at least one more full raft of uh waves to go nearing 60 percent through the remembrance and that's how it yeah and then uh 37 percent through analysis which is partially like unlocking things through mystery points and some of those i gotta go back and redo the missions uh i'm full on board let's do some more um ryoko Okay, Ryoko Shinonome mixed up Juro Karabe for Juro Izumi from her memories. She recalled Izumi saving her from Kaiju in the past. Or, more specifically, 
earlier in her experience, but in the future, but not really in the future because there's no actual time travel going on. <laughs> Holy shit, this game is complicated. Okay. Um, so, where are we trying to get to now? I don't think I can get up to Nurse's Office 1. I, I think we have to continue from Nurse's Office 2 for a while. So, our next target would be this. So, we have to get to Empty Cafeteria? Yeah. Okay. So, bye. Are you alright? Where are you going? Stop following. Now, I'm gonna have to check the map a couple more times because I'm still... Like, where where do I go from here? But I'm pretty sure that we talk about the compatible girls. And then... Yeah, to the empty cafeteria. Okay, so... Let's figure this out. We're gonna go talk to her. Tell me, Kisar... Kisaragi... Do you like sweets, senpai? So... Right. Okay, uh, let's talk to her about running away. Okay, and now I think the staircase is this way? Yes. I'd rather not. Also, um, so Mia had sort of like taken note of it before. In this case, compatible girls actually means which of the female high school students have the capacity to pilot a sentinel. So she was given uh, notes from the school nurse to go like scope them out. Uh, we actually don't know for what purpose, maybe to see if they have nano machines or whatever. And her story started off as sort of an interrogation of those characters. So that's why she has a list of compatible girls. That's what they're compatible about. But I took my pills. All right, let me just, as he comes up the stairs. Yeah, we need to get to the cafeteria. Senpai? All right, we already had that conversation. Goodbye, Shu. Oh, really? Okay. Who are... Get out of here. Nope. Okay, gotta take pills. This isn't right. You should probably go... Okay. See? Better now. Yes, cafeteria. Yep. Now, the question is, where am I supposed to go from here? Oh, hello to Ruination, Ronan. Ronan, uh, and... I guess they're done selling. Oh, look, there she is. There's Takamiya. My head. Oh, Christ. It hurts. So a quick pause to say thank you to Ronan and anybody else who uh, came to Mia's series of watch parties yesterday. It was a lot of fun. Uh, I don't want to attempt to recap them too closely but uh among other things there were some like what's what's a below a b movie like a q movie we got to watch one of those and it was a lot of fun and uh also the most recent episode of kyber shards and some make me watch my dad play games called hate there was a lot of great stuff in there and, and ronan was there for at least some of it so yeah ronan thank you so much for stopping by i really had a great time that girl. All right, Mia, uh, regular fucking voice. How's this one? Shinonome. What are you doing? What? Those black suits, they're looking for you. For me? <sighs> Who are you? What are you talking about? I'm an undercover agent for the SIU too. Did you forget that already? Sorry, undercover agent? can't go on. My head... Okay. It's empty. Uh, that was the last of them. I need to get more pills before it gets worse. The nurse's office should have some. Yeah, Yuki is the uh, Veronica Mars of the piece. Uh, so she said something that I can ask about, I think. Oh no, it's just that I'm out of pills. Hmm. Four Eyes has something on you. That's why you've been forced into being a spy for him? Four Eyes? Tetsuya Ida, from the Special Investigations Unit. <laughs> Mr. Ida, but why would he... You really don't remember? What about when we shifted back here? In the science room? 
Can you remind me? I'm not sure that I know when these flashbacks are occurring relative to the other flashbacks. What in the hell? Sakura High, Sector 4. The first one you set up. The gate in the science room. Amiguchi's not here. Shit, we left him. That is a surprisingly that surprising level of disappointment that Amaguchi's not here. Tell me the truth, Mr. Ida. Am I just being used? Because if that's what you want, then I don't care. Ugh. But you having feelings for another girl? I can't accept that. <laughs> I, I I will I will note briefly that as far as I can tell, Shinonome has always been into Mr. Ida, and Mr. Ida has always been about uh, we are literally trying to save all of humanity, and also you are at least fifteen years younger than I am, so no. Mr. Ida, you are just going to throw us aside like nothing. Also, you could have a do-over with her. Shinonome-kun, just take a breath. This is all a big misunderstanding. Ever since I saw the recordings from the lab, I can't take it. <sighs> You're confused. You need to take your pills and calm down. I've made my decision. I know what I have to do. Stun mode deactivate. <sighs> Wait, Shinonome-kun. Goodbye, Mr. Ida. <sighs> Yo, Yuki, you're a terrible storyteller. If you don't mind my asking, what happened next? So, do you remember now? <laughs> no! No, there's no way. I shot him? Yep, then you booked it out of there. Anyways, Four Eyes wasn't budging. I had no choice but to call in the black suits. Is Mr. Ida... Is he okay? How would I know? I haven't had any contact with him since. No. Well, it's hard to imagine he's okay after that. Might even be dead. Oh boy. No, I'm out of pills. I still don't really understand. Why'd you do it? I saw a recording. A recording of what? No, stop. I don't want to remember. No more. There's no time. I need to hurry. I need to find as much as I can today. I, I love the idea that this is Marinda's first encounter with this game, assuming that he's still watching. And it I, I suspect this makes exactly as much sense if this is your first episode as it is the 14th as it is for us. Where did I leave off? Accessing Mr. Ida's research. Okay, log 3214. And the next one is... <gasps> research on AI? Uh, the data's gone. Strange. The log just ends here? The most recent log is from three years ago. Anything more recent than that has been deleted. Shoot! <sighs> Good thing I had my 
gun. That's weird. They shouldn't have been able to get in. I locked the passageway door behind me. The surveillance camera. Maybe there's something on there. Okay, so wait, where do I... The surveillance footage from when I came here last. Found it. Hmm. Morimura and Renya Goto have been here a few times. So they're the ones that opened the passageway. Okay. Maybe if I keep going back through the footage... I'll find out who deleted the locks. I apologize for having to use this body. I did not anticipate that 426 would take yours from you. I'm sorry. You made that body... just for me. No, I'm the one who let my guard down. I'll make you another, right away. You should make bodies for the others, instead of me. Yes, well, unfortunately, they no longer need bodies. Because of the Sentinels. So you're aware. You're going to trick the UFO into thinking it's being controlled by the Compatible. By putting our bodyless friends into the Sentinels. That's right. Although I'm still unsure how successful we will be. The UFO is not easily deceived. Then put me into a Sentinel too. Don't be ridiculous. If you're discovered, you'll be removed as a foreign entity. It's too risky. Miura and Hijiyama can handle it. They lived as humans in an era of war anyway. You can look at me. I'm not Tomi Kisaragi anymore. But if I transfer you into this world's Tomi Kisaragi, everything will be back to normal. My research has been progressing. You'll be able to come back. No. Absolutely not. How could you even consider it? She's still me. Sacrificing someone so I can take their place. I could never forgive you for that, Iyakuya. Tommy. Please. Put me into a sentinel. <sighs> I'll think about it. Anyway, I need to make some adjustments. I'm gonna shut off the power for now. Why can't you see? The only person I want to save is you. Mm. I don't care who has to die for it. None of this means anything if you're not here. It's just as he said. If I had just put her in another body from the start, none of this would have happened. Her original consciousness data is still in the UFO. No. What if we just start over from the beginning? From that day? Then I can transfer her data into the new Tomi Kisaragi. She'd never have to know. We just need to reset things. It'll all be better that way. Dude, I fucking hate Shu Amaguchi or Tetsuya Ida or whatever name he goes by. He is the worst character. Uh, he... <sighs> I can't make this comparison because it's an entirely different game and I feel like it would be a big spoiler, but he reminds me a lot of an antagonist in an altogether different franchise. This... Uh, 
this sort of like tech bro outlook on the world where like well he's the smartest guy in the room so he always knows what's best and i'm sitting here thinking like nothing there's no better way to express your affection but for someone than by making grand gestures that are explicitly against their stated desires the exact things they're telling you not to do by God, those are the things that you should be sitting there and doing, because uh, how else would you ever prove how much you love and respect them? Um, also, I actually don't know what he means when he's talking about, like, this world's Tomi Kisaragi or start over. My best guess is that what he's going to do is manipulate that Tomi Kisaragi's memory so that she doesn't remember some of these things and then implant her against her will into the this universe's Ki Tomi Kisaragi. It, there's some of the nomenclature remains awfully unclear, but we'll figure it out as we go. Oh, I oh, I have to do um wave 10 before we can do this and it's only one more. So, yeah, let's go do a battle. Oh, hello to club club. Um, Jade May has been playing, um, uh, it, not It Takes Two, uh, A Way Out, and I've been watching some of it, and I don't think that, um, uh, you, you're not the co-op partner, are you? Or am I, like, completely mishearing the voice? Either way, it's been a lot of fun. I hope you let her know that we've been, uh, enjoying it a great deal. Um... Jab asks, have I ever mentioned that I hate time travel? Well, good news. There's little to no time travel actually in this story, which uh, is very confusing because most of the characters believe there is time travel, but we've uncovered a lot of evidence that says that there's not. Yeah, Club is not the co-op partner. I, I figured I'd, I'd recognize your voice from the XCOM 2 and also from when you were playing... Um, you played something with her. So if we do this battle, then we get to continue Shinonome's story. So let's hit it. Okay, so Shinonome is conveniently brain overloaded. So that's okay. She doesn't have to be on the strike team. Let's get Amaguchi in here. Uh, I got this. Sorry, everybody, but we got to bring Amaguchi with us. And then from here, our only real goal is to survive the combat. So we've got a lot of freedom on how we do it. Enhanced long range twin tail kaiju will appear. So aside from that, we are, uh, we're pretty open. Um, that's a lot of, that's a lot of people who are on the verge of being uh, melted down. So let's grab, we're gonna bring at least one more G4. They're both level 19, so... I mean, Takamiya. I like Takamiya. Um... Okay, we're gonna bring Kisaragi, because she's the lowest level G3. Let's bring Karabe, because he's not gonna melt down, um, and Fuyasaka's right on the edge. And then between these two, who do we think is the lowest level? We might actually bring... Okay. Actually, he is uh, just slightly the lowest level. Oh, wait, you know what? Yeah, even though, oops, even though this is going to melt him down, this. he is two levels lower than the others. So I still got one spot on the team. Who are we going to bring along? She's 17, 18, 19, 17. Goto, oh, you're on the squad. Nice. Okay, now, how much... How many upgrade points do we have? 72,000. Jesus Christ. All right. Um, so we're going to get a lot of long-range guys. Long-range guys are usually, though not always, thwarted by rapid-firing... I'm not sure that we need to upgrade anybody in here, but... I'll tell you what, I'm feeling a little bit uncomfortable with the number of guys that are about to be disabled, like they're going to get brain overloaded. So let's let's upgrade his Neuralink twice. That way, he's not actually going to be disabled uh, for the next one. Uh, for Kisaragi, 
Yeah, she's always been main battery heavy railgun. That's been her jam the whole time. Although, look at this, for 10,000 points, fires off a powerful missile at a long distance can decimate a wide area. I don't know how we cannot take that. Let's equip it, and then we're gonna upgrade her super large missile really at least four times. But then we're also gonna do... No, actually, you know what? We, we invested enough in her. Who else do we have that we can do? Takamiya. She's one of my favorite characters and also has an available slot. The interceptors are a super awesome ability. Yeah, we're gonna get her some interceptors and then make sure that we remember to equip it and get those updated a whole bunch. And then, yeah. Her big deal is leg spike, but I'm gonna let that ride for a second. Goto, mm, not really my favorite. He does have interceptors that I like, and he has gravity missiles that are no joke. I like those a lot. But flare torpedo pays dividends every time we use it. And then Amaguchi, Amaguchi can suck it. I don't like him at all. Um, let's upgrade his uh, shield repair a bunch put you into a support role now. Now that leaves me 31,000 points. And I think that what I'd like to do is Kisaragi fires off that heavy railgun a whole bunch and... I would love to reduce her wait times. What will do that for me? The generator? No, 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 no. All right, um, let's upgrade her attack and um, accuracy. And increases critical damage, yeah. That's a good call. And then for Takamiya, we've upgraded her fire control twice. Let's upgrade her armor. A chance to nullify attacks, yeah. Because she, more than almost any other character, really gets into the thick of the fight. I'm gonna upgrade that a second time. Now, the only other person that I might want to do some points for is him. I could upgrade his Neuralink a second time. I don't think that I really need that. I'm going to upgrade... Let's give him some armor. And then let's upgrade his actuator. Yeah, and that leaves me with three grand. Is there anything that I want to upgrade for 3,000? Long-range missiles? Yeah. Yeah, we can do that twice. Okay. Spend all our points. Let's jump in. Now, I think Marinda had said something about not liking mech battles. Uh, the good news, this is barely recognizable as mech battles. I have something to report to you all. Uh, finally. Is this processing stuff done yet? It's well over 90% processed. We're so close. But there's a problem. As some of you may know, I'm working from the command ship in orbit. Literally no one knows that. It's still on that orbital path. Soon I'll be too far from your location. I'll lose signal, and I won't be able to communicate. And when that happens, the mainframe processing will be suspended. It'll be another 850 minutes before I come back from a full orbit. Until I can re-establish a connection, you have to hold on. But that's just over 14 hours. We have to hold out until tomorrow afternoon? Please don't give up hope. Until I get cut off, I promise I'll do everything I can. Uh, this is insane. Have you seen how fast new ones keep appearing? There's no way we can fend them off for that long. <sighs> Say, as long as you're still here, maybe you can <laughs> sing for us. <laughs> All right. As long as you can hear my voice, you'll know I'm still connected. Warning! Dymo signatures approaching. Preparing to intercept. Initiating tactical analysis. Uh, we must destroy the Twin Tail EX. 
since the twin tail EX's attacks, sorry, since the twin tail twin tail EX attacks with thermal missiles that can melt even a central's armor, it's best to intercept or dodge their attacks. Yeah, what when would I ever not intercept or dodge their attacks? Why why would I ever choose to take the attack? Okay. Target. Oh, are we actually gonna get a musical piece in here? Like I I so so many thoughts, but chief among them, it is time to start considering if in the year of our Lord 2021, Shu Amaguchi is actually the worst character that we encounter the whole year. And that's in a year where we played Disco Elysium that had a lot of very ugly personalities in it by design. Um, and I, I'd have to think of what else we played, but Shu Amaguchi is one of the most odious people I think we've encountered in any game that we've ever played. So there we go. Uh, I am very worried about this musical track getting us in trouble on Twitch. So let's see if we can fill our audio scape with a bunch of explosions. And I'll tell you what I'd like to do. I would very much like to get some interceptors out here because interceptors uh, act on their own accord and will help us out throughout the entire battle. Wow, this um, this music is not very quiet either. Sentry gun? Yeah, let's get some sentry guns out here. And I'm gonna put them way forward. Uh, maybe the enemies will attack them and maybe not. But either way, they're going to be ongoing uh, support. Now, super large missile. Yes, yes, fire the super large missile at the super big guy. No point overthinking it. Okay, that's a good start. Um, so, for him, we could launch some... Oh, actually, yeah, there's... Uh... Okay, no, the flying guys are actually my drones, but we do have some missiles coming in. Anti-air defensive flares, you would think, would assist with that. So let's throw up some of these the defensive screen. Better put and on a for you, John. Floating mine. Oh, right. Yeah. Um, more than that, though, let's see if we can get some multi-locking missiles in on these guys. I'm not too concerned about killing them, but then again, the more of them that wind up dead, the better. All right, yeah. And I can hit both of these guys with the arm-mounted uh, convergent lasers. Let's do that. Okay, hold on a second. Um, the uh, the music is too loud, so what we're going to do here is bounce out, and we're going to take this down. Probably, yeah, let's just take the in-game audio down. We're going to take it down. Let's remember to bring this back up afterwards, but this should be significantly quieter and hopefully still audible. So please let me know if this is better. Okay, now, our G1, our main goal is to get this G1 over to that guy as quickly as possible. Then again, using some EMP attractor would probably help take down some of those missiles, so okay. let's what do now? a move. Much better and still audible. Okay. All right. Um, these missiles, we have to stop. So what do we have that'll do that? Probably the arm-mounted pulse lasers, but not from this position. So, or, or, multi-locking missiles will... Yeah, it's not great positioning, so... Flare torpedo should... I don't know, but I'm thinking it'll do some damage to those missiles as they come in. Let's give it a shot. You st- what? What the fuck? Okay, uh, did anybody see me ask him to deploy Flare Torpedo over here? By specifically selecting over here? What? Okay, okay. Like any other pucks. Um, EMP Attractor. No, we still don't have any of those missiles in range, so we're just gonna let him continue going for now. So again, uh, Flare Torpedo. I would really like to have it up over here. I'm gonna give that another shot. 
There we go. Why did Shu botch that so badly? That was actually really irritating. EMP attractor. So again, it'll shoot down the missiles, but I want all of those. I want that entire Mighty, Do Mighty Duck style incoming flying V. I want as many of those as I can. So let's just let time advance a little bit further here. Yeah, the machine cannons are also gonna be real good against this. So, or sentry gun. Yeah, I'm gonna throw down a sentry gun right here. All right. Interceptors, yes, please. Let's get those up. We don't control where the interceptors go, but they're gonna they're gonna go and they're gonna do some good work. So, epic epinomenon says torpedoes hit the first kaiju they contact. Oh, is that what happened? Thank you for that clarification. There must have been like a kaiju or something right there, and it impacted at that point. Okay, that I. There was something that I missed, and I wasn't sure what it is. So he also has the anti-air defensive flares. And yeah, let's throw these up in the missiles path. Unless I want to do the EMP attractor, which I super do. Yep, that's going to take out all those guys. Whether it takes them out, it's really going to mess up the missiles, I think. So, yep, boom. Okay. There's a whole, look at this. Look at these guys lined up. Do I have anything that's gonna punch through them? Kisaragi does, but does this guy? Um, well, he just hit them with EMP flare. What I do wanna do though is see the, um, the guy over there with the shield. Let's take him out. We learned in the last battle that those guys are real bad news. All right. Um, Yep, multi-locking missiles right there. Seems like a great way for him to spend his day. Yeah, Epinomenon says that he was right on top of one, and that's why the flare torpedo went off. That, you know, in retrospect, it's not that bad to have one there. We're setting up like a big defensive screen. We want as much damage being done against incoming targets as possible. So I'm not that upset about it. I really want to fire. Yeah, what do we got? Whoops, 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 whoops. Uh, heavy railgun. Well, I can mess these guys up pretty good. Take out that shield guy. Or... Nope, I can't quite get too many of those guys. Yeah, let's take out this guy. We're gonna try to aim for that shield guy. It feels like a little bit of a waste, but I don't want those shield guys eating up all my precious damage output. Oh, and he is totally out of energy. So, yeah, here's what we're gonna do with him. We're gonna, oops, oops, nope, nope, nope. Let's move him up here. I want him on standby with that, um, his uh, rapid fire cannons. Wow, I burned a lot of energy. I'm actually okay with it. But do I want him to move up right now when he doesn't have enough energy to use his demolisher blades? Not especially. So I think I'm actually going to put him into defensive mode. Yes, all these guys are gonna attack him, but they are also uh, currently stunned. So let's just have him recharge. Okay, so yeah, we're gonna have Goto here basically make sure that no extra missiles get through, and that's going to involve shooting off his machine gun. Oh, hello to Patikin! Hello to Patikin and everybody coming over. Patikin, thank you so much for the raid and the resubscription. And what in the holy hell... I don't know what I just did over here. I promise you I didn't. Okay, we'll let that ride. Patikin, thank you very much for the raid. I hope that you had a lot of fun with Spider-Man. Patikin has been playing the um, Marvel Spider-Man on the PlayStation 5, the remastered edition, and gotten to watch some of that. And man, that is a really, really good game. I can actually shoot off some more interceptors with her, but we can't just send a G1 in here. I don't see any other... No, we do have some missiles coming in. Yeah, all right, so here's what we're gonna do. Let's just move her up. That'll give her a little bit of time to regenerate, and then we will remeasure what we're gonna do next. 
multi-locking missiles against all these guys. Is that going to leave him? He has taken a very small amount of damage. I'm not too worried about it, but maybe we don't want to throw him further into the thick of things. We do a floating mine, flare torpedo. Um, I actually really like this. Where's that missile going? Do we know? I don't know. I'm going to stay back here a little bit, and we're just going to try to mess these guys up. Okay. I don't know what I did to it. Uh, also, it's claiming that it's pause. The chat. I'm so sorry. Patiki loves the remaster. Glad I did a replay of the game. And more than Amiya says, um, I shit the raid. Oh, sorry. Oh, shit. I, I said I shit the raid. Oh, shit. I missed the raid. Welcome, raiders. Yeah, um, Patiki, I will say this. Your stream looks phenomenal. Like, just, just, you probably know this, but just to share from the external point of view, it really looks great. So, a bunch of new guys came in. I would so love to have Kisaragi on the other side of the river and just mow these guys down with her railgun. But since I don't have that option, what we're going to do is the next best thing. We are going to move... Okay. Yeah, let's see if we can actually move her. This feels a little bit too adventurous. I don't think it'll work. I think everybody will be in a different position by the time we get there, but uh, we want to push our front line forward as much as we can. All right, we have some long-range missiles and the will to use them, or, or that main battery railgun. It's at the absolute outer edge of her range so rather than that let's let's so move her to a more advantageous point and i feel like that's going to be getting up here we need to get her across the river oh god we've got some incoming fire up here and i'm distressed that it doesn't feel like there's a whole lot i can do about it all we can really do juro is have you continue to move forward get you across the river okay now we've got some missiles coming in that's a problem he's also recharged enough that he can now fire his gravity missile but he's far enough back that, that is not very helpful also we do have a, a very high missile do you see it up there at the very top of the screen can i i can shoot that yeah, and he's going to come back up pretty soon because this is not a, a long-firing thing. So let's just take out that uh, very, very high missile. Okay, I do not want him here. <laughs> this is a very bad position for him. Let's move him basically anywhere else. But the question is, where exactly? Yeah, let's just move him... Let's move him back here, out of the immediate danger zone, and then we will uh, reconfigure what we want to do. Okay, he can mess up a lot of these missiles. Yeah, let's... Uh, or a lot of these guys. I like messing up these guys more than the missiles, because we've got uh, Goto back there to do that. So, fire a uh, flare torpedo at them. Multi-locking missiles will also carry him forward, and I don't like that. So what we're going to do is arm-mounted pulse lasers. Is this going to take out most of them? Probably not. But it's going to take out at least two missiles, hopefully, and mess up that front line of guys. Or maybe it'll do none of that and just mess up the front line of guys. Okay, I like this. This position is way better for him. And yes, I see all the incoming missiles... Goto is actually taking longer to recharge than I thought he would. So, new plan. Let's... Yeah, let's do this. Yeah, that's gonna, I think, do a bunch of damage to those incoming missiles. Wow, she actually made it all the way over there. That's surprisingly awesome. 
So let's do this. Look at this. <laughs> We're gonna fire straight down their front line. I don't know it'll kill them all, but she's got a lot of enemies in her firing arc. God, that felt good. Uh, yeah, Kirillin is saying hello to Patikin. Um, Patikin's waving hello back. I, and for real, Patikin, thank you. Like, I do like to circle back, but thank you to you and Caroluna for the raids and uh, Patikin for the for the resubscription. Um, it really does mean a lot. So she's still on the move, but I actually don't. Where is she exactly? Okay, I just need her to be at this crossroads. I want her to fire down this line. Okay, he has recharged. Um... Yeah, not a great position for him. Fire off some anti-air defensive flares. Oh, yeah, all the other defensive flares have gone offline, so this is, uh... Last for 20 seconds. Or I could just move forward. I think I want to get him forward. No, I want him slightly forward. If I'm going to EMP attract, I want to get the uh, EX twin tail back there as well. So let's just move him a little bit further. Just a little bit further. Yep, 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 yep. Now, this will disable all these guys and uh, hopefully stop some of the incoming missiles from the guy way there in the back. Doesn't do a lot of damage, but maybe it'll mess him up. Okay, we can see some torpedoes or whatever we're going to call here coming in. So if you could fire these. Yep. So I believe this should hit all of these incoming missiles. Some of them are so high up on the screen, I don't know if it made contact, but I don't see them anymore. Um... Uh, let's see. So these guys are all disabled now. So this is a great opportunity, I feel like, for multi-locking missiles. Maybe clear the clear the road for my G1 to get back there. Okay, Takamiya. If Takamiya isn't our, our MVP, I don't know who is, because she really did a great move there. Um, but let's see if we can maybe get up over here. Our goal is to kill this guy. If along the way we can massacre every other kaiju, it's just free experience points. So I would like to be goal-oriented, but we don't have to be myopic to the point um, where we don't... Where we, where we pass up free experience points. Let's throw out another sentry gun, like, over here. At worst, it'll draw some fire, and at best, it'll... Hit some of those guys. No All right. You are clear to go forward. Actually, you know what? what You're now? actually clear to rush attack up here. Carol is saying this music. Uh, it's very atmospheric. Um, it really puts a different spin on it. I am extremely worried that if I'm quiet for more than three seconds, we're going to get copyright struck. So regardless of the relative volume, I'm glad that we've notched it down some. It is always disappointing when part of the stream gets muted. God, I love her railgun. Okay, and so what can I do to mess this guy up? Leg spike him for sure. Interceptors, that's okay. Multi-locking missiles, mm. All right, I'll tell you what. Let's, uh, again, not be too goal-oriented. Let me take them out. Well, or at least hurt them a bunch. Okay, let's not stand in this firing arc, is my vote. Let's uh, get you over here. Oh my god! <laughs> that is a lot of missiles. Okay, what can we do about that? Flare Torpedo might take them out, but multi-locking missiles definitely will. At least the plurality of them. Bingo. Nice. Here's the 
Okay. And, uh, Goto, you're not doing anything for us back there anymore. Let's just, uh, get you up here. It definitely is not. It's not as bad as it looks. Oh, it is. Just don't be a hero, all right? Oh, wait, when, what? Did he run into a missile? What did I do? That's really bad. Okay. Do I have anybody who can help him with that? Goto, do you have any sort of like a shield matrix or something? He does. Okay. How much closer do I have to be to use that? This close, as it turns out. Yes, please do this. I didn't think that was going to do as much damage as it did to him. Those orange zones are enemy flare torpedoes. Crap. Uh, and I don't know how to... So when, A, when did those arrive? And B, what do you do about enemy flare torpedoes? They can't be shot down like missiles that I know of. Um, okay, well, I don't want to stand no in this zone. So let's see if we can just get out of that, but maybe not wander directly Number into the... 10. Hmm. Alright, that missile's just gonna have to go on its merry way. I don't know if this guy can be shut down by an EMP, but I'm gonna give it a try anyway. Uh oh. Oh, she's out of range. I don't know what that means, except for the fact that the music has changed. So. I'm going to leg spike this factory. Take that. Okay, so... What do I do about this? If I move him, I feel like he's going to take a lot of damage. If I attempt to repair him, I feel like he's going to take a lot of damage. I could defend... What... Does that actually increase his defense? I don't remember. Or I can shield matrix him as well. And shield repair. Places a shield and recovers 30% uh, HP of an ally. That sounds like a really good idea. Um, can you do this without moving even a little bit? Because that'd be great. Okay. Okay. He's slightly less dead. Um... Long-range missiles? Not long enough. Okay. She is very low on energy. I'm actually going to... Well, you know what? If she's out of range, she's out of range. Let's just move her up. So, the missiles themselves... The missiles themselves, they weren't missiles. They were flare torpedoes. So, when he blew that, when he flew into the middle and blew them up, they all deployed right here. That's what happened. I think. Okay. That was not a very good <laughs> decision. Um, cool. So, as far as I know, the only thing I can do about that is wait for them to expire. If I charge him in there, he does have a shield. I could try to leap attack in there. I could fire off the metagauge EMP. The EMP attractor did not help me, and he doesn't have enough points for a demolisher blade. So I'm concerned that if I leap attack in there, he's going to take damage from every single flare torpedo on the way in. I am going to no point recharge EP. We're going to let him think okay. about it for a second. And, uh... Yeah, let's just throw down some more sentry guns. Me up. I can do this. Yeah, no, you keep moving. No, All right, Goto. He has one EP. Yeah, I'm going to just have him defend. I don't feel like he can do anything of value if he doesn't have enough energy to shoot. Okay, most of the flare board torpedoes are down. It does look like there's some more... some things coming out. Um, I don't know if I want to shoot them, because if they're more flare torpedoes, then I'm really in trouble. 
Hold on a second. Um, what are those? Show me what they are. Long range missiles? No, that's what I'm firing. Crap. Now I don't know if I should shoot those. Because if they all turn out to be flare torpedoes, then Amaguchi gets roasted. So... Let's just have you recharge. Yeah, I can fuck those guys up. But is that going to kill Amaguchi? He does still have a, a shield. Um... Fudge. Let's do some interceptors. Clean them up. I'm having... Shit. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, some more flare, flare torpedoes went out. Amaguchi has not yet taken any action. I kind of like the idea of some more shield repair. Okay, he's actually back up at full health. Um, uh, what, I, what I'm learning is that my original plan of charging in there and beating him to death is offset by the degree to which he becomes very, very lethal with all of these defenses. Um, man, shit. Uh... So there is another possibility. If I go to repair him, I can actually, like, eject him and have him just walk over there like a human being. And I don't know that flare torpedoes hurt human beings. Um... You know something? Fuck it. Let's, uh, let's go flare, uh... He's gonna die if I do this, though. God damn it. And he has no... Yeah. I feel like I need to defend him again. I feel like the only way forward is a lot of ranged attacks and to hopefully get Amaguchi out of there as soon as possible. Number 13, okay? Moving out. What's the plan? No. Uh, no. This. Yeah, so Amaguchi is consistently taking zero damage, but that's not going to last because uh, I, I think our best goal right now is, can you just get out of the uh, the line of fire here? Can you just get back here? Yeah, he took uh, several rounds of zero damage there. Okay, I can throw a flare torpedo back at him. It explodes overheating them. Gravity missiles, shield matrix... Let's get a shield matrix. Yes, please. Yep, shield matrix right there if we could. More shields for everybody. Are we winning? Okay, he is now outside of the flare torpedo detonation zone. So, and he's also extremely low on EP. So let's just have him defend. Let's get him. Okay. Cook him to death. No, I want to wait for his next... Oh, he is EMP. He is EMP, so I don't think that he can fire right now. That would be nice. Um, can you just continue to move up there for me? Oh, she's so drained. Yeah, let's... Um, wow, I haven't run this low on energy ever. Okay, wait, wait, wait. More flare torpedoes just came out. So, yeah, you are way too, way too, way too far back. Number 22, okay, here's the plan. What now? Okay. Um, what I want to do is this. That should detonate all the flare torpedoes over him and stop them from spreading out. Just watch. Assuming that he hits any of them. He hits some of them. Okay, he's still actually moving. 
Long range missiles. Yes. I think that's most of them. Okay, Kisaragi took a little bit of damage. Yeah, we, we neutralized all those flare torpedoes in there. Um, does he still have a shield? I don't see a shield on him. I don't see a shield on him. He does have a lot of juice left, though. Um, maybe the big mistake I'm making is letting all the flare torpedoes detonate in the same area. Maybe I should let them fly out so that there's less... There's less damage potential rushed in, because he if he goes in there, I don't see how he survives it. I'll try. Um, you know, have him repair, I guess. Or continue to defend. Okay, can I get Juro out of there? <laughs> Not happy with this incoming damage. But no, he's, uh... Okay, well, first of all, don't move oh, forward the into the actual firing arc. All right, I think Juro's just going to eat this. Oh, no. No, he's not. Yeah, shield matrix right there. Yeah, he's, he's drained. Yuck. All right, um, let's move her the rest of the way up. Um, God, God, I just want to beat him up. I just want to get in there with like a Devastator Blade and we could end this. Okay, hold on. We, we've got a narrow beam of uh, opportunity in here. Yeah, do that. Got it. Let's get him. I gotta, I gotta get her charged up. Okay, I, I honestly think I'm going to try not to hit those incoming missiles, because if I can, like, get around behind them... Yeah. Move, like, back here. Okay. Demolish your blade. Get him. that was very quiet. We just brought the uh, the volume for the dialogue and stuff back up. It's weird how sometimes music overrides in a way that the game itself doesn't. Yeah, I'm a Gucci cop. We got in there. Hope we still got an S rank. The actual important thing is that we didn't lose because by not losing, we keep our win streak alive. And that's how we get so much of our, so many of our points. funny that uh i just every single time that i like anything goes slightly wrong I'm like oh that's it d rank you, you know what i'm comparing this to the grading score is when i play like devil may cry and i never ever get anything above like a d for disappointing
Okay, so we do have a third area, and in order to do it, we have to complete Juro Karabe's Juro Karabe event. Uh, we're nowhere near that, but because we did that, uh, we are going to do the next Shinonome, but before that, let's jump into analysis, and we're going to look at some of our mystery points. We've got two more. So the meteor, when the kaiju come down, they descend in a plume of atmospheric fire like meteorites. However, they have a slow falling speed compared to meteors, and an observer can easily see them slowing down before they hit the surface. Let's see if there, anything else got uploaded. Oh, Seaside Vacation Song. The debut song of the new idol, Miyuki Inaba. The single was pulled from her debut album, The Control and sold as a flexi-disc. With a successful low price sales strategy, the song is sold like hotcakes and gained tremendous support from middle schoolers and high schoolers. And that's it. So, how do we want to spend our two mystery points? Oh, we've learned something about Ryoko. <clears throat> Shinonome discovers Ida's true feelings and motive from watching surveillance footage in the underground facility in 2105. Realizing that Ida is attached only to Tomi Kisaragi and has no intention of saving Shinonome and the others, Shinonome finally loses her patience and ends up shooting and killing Ida. Killing, though? Is that what we learned? I feel like there was, uh, like we were uncertain of her, uh, of his outcome there. Oh, really? Epinomenon says you actually keep the streak even if you do lose. The only thing that breaks it is recovering. Why is it called a wind streak? <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Okay, Ida seeks to transplant the simulated personality of the revived Kisaragi android into the physical body of the current Kisaragi, but she rejects the idea, she being the android version. He then realizes that he should have transplanted Kisaragi into the living body of the current Kisaragi to begin with, instead of reviving her as an android first, for that reason, he aims to reset the world and begin anew. So, reset the world. I still, like, I have theories on what that means in terms of, like, just exterminating. Like, are we, are we learning that Tetsuya Ida is actually the personality responsible for setting the kaiju on the domes of people we still have insufficient information but we've heard a lot about resetting the timeline the loop and is Ida the cause of that like we we don't know yet but it's something that we're trying to um pin down okay we read about that front gate passageway you'll notice that I don't really care about the we I'll tell you what how about we learn something about the kaiju invasion let's read about the one in 2064. A defensive battle that took place towards the center area of the Ashitaba city in 2064. Juro Karabe, Izumi, Ryoko Shinonome, and A. Sekigahara were among the Sentinel pilot force during this battle. Sentinel number 15, piloted by Sekigahara, shut down the systems of all their Sentinels, causing the front line to collapse. Morimura prioritized the lives of the pilots and force transmitted all Sentinels. By transmitted, that like teleporting them, and I think to other domes or quote-unquote time periods, Tetsuya Ida stayed behind and fought using a remotely controlled sentinel. All right, let's read about the 2025 one, so this would have been about 40 years earlier. The kaiju attack in 2025, Juro Karabe, Izumi, tries to protect the city by himself but ends up losing. Following Karabe's defeat, Megumi Yakushiji manages to find him in the ruins, but Karabe had already suffered a main brain, immense brain damage from piloting the Sentinel for two hours straight. He loses consciousness in Yakushiji's arms. Because of the battle, Karabe ends up completely losing his memories. Ren but he doesn't become a husk, which is interesting. So there must have been some sort of personality rebuild. I mean, we, we know that, but we don't really understand the mechanics of it yet. Anyway, Renya Goto and Morimura snatched Tomi Kisaragi away while she was searching for her mother in a commercial building of the Ka Kamazumi Ward. And that's all my mystery points. Okay, let's go do the next Ry Ryoko Shinonome. Is this the last one or second to last one? Let's find out. <coughs> Ryoko Shinonome recalled the time she bid farewell to Tetsuya Ida when he was trying to reset the world in order to save Tomi Kisaragi. God. There was like an, an episode of Angel, like the uh, the Joss Whedon television series Angel, about somebody who didn't want to go through a breakup, so intended to, like, 
end all of reality. It's actually a fairly early episode, and I just... Can you... Can you imagine being the subject of someone's affection such that they will con con uh, commit genocide just to be with you? It's just, it's, it's not a good look. Of course. All right, I think we're going to get the same dialogue Easy. here. Take, Take your time. time. What year is it? 1985. Do you know where you are? Do you know what year it is? 1985. What's the last thing you remember? 426. He got away from me. I won't let him escape next time. I see. All right. Oh, yeah. Her memory's fucked <laughs> up. Yep, we're in Nurse's Office 1. So now we have- now we've learned about the surveillance footage. What does that get us? Probably that we can talk to her about it. Uh, except I can't talk about anything. How are you feeling? My head really hurts. Maybe I should keep you here for further observation. My internal clock just needs a bit to readjust. You're putting too much of a burden on your nervous system. You need to stop shifting. Do you still have your pills? Make sure you're taking them. Surveillance footage? That's right. I saw something important. I can't remember. Maybe I should go look again. Hello to Brian. It was in Shikishima's underground facility in 2105. I just need to get to the gate. I don't think she's going to let you get to the gate, though. They said the gate's been sealed, but what if it's a lie? A way to try and keep me here. <sighs> okay. Well, that's all our bright pills. Should I take the pills? Oh, I guess so. This should make me feel a little better. Oh. Take those when your headaches start to get bad. The medicine is a bit strong. You may experience some temporary side effects. But don't worry. Your memories will return quickly. Brian, I hope you're well. I hope you're having a great, uh, a great week so far. So I should be able to get here. Uh, presumably she's going to go to the gate and try to get to 2105. Yes. Mia, thank you very much for doing the shout out, uh, including the one to Brian, but just in general. Thank you very much. Footage. Uh, seems like the one that we just got. I saw something important. Oh, that that was it. It was just slightly updated. And I don't see anything unusual here in the science lab. Except that this dummy might be wearing a hat. Can't really tell. Oh, right, and all the holograms. I knew it wouldn't work. What are you doing? Mori Mora. All right, sorry, everybody. Hold on just one second. Just have to grab one thing real quick. All right, uh, let's go here, and we should be all set. I locked the gate. You won't be able to use it. I knew it. It was you. You disabled the gates, not 426. Stop being ridiculous. You need to take your pills. I won't let those damn mind-controlling pills screw with my head anymore! Who told you that? I saw it for myself. You're trying to mess with both me and Iori Fuyusaka's heads. She's getting worse. The code that infected the Sentinels in 2064. It separates the nanomachines from the rest of your brain. Your memories will keep disappearing. 
Those pills you've been taking, they inhibit that separation. They try to preserve the link. But its effectiveness has been gradually decreasing. No, I won't believe anything you say. Where's Renya Goto? Are you screwing him up too? It was you, you know. <gasps> you were the cause of the infection. You inserted the code that 426 created. No, just more lies. It's true. Goto. You were conspiring with Morimura this whole time? I've told you the truth a number of times. But you weren't able to accept it. You couldn't hold on to the memory. That's a lie. You messed me up with those pills. You made me confused. It's all there. You just have to remember. The code that infected the Sentinels. DD-426. You were the one that gave it to Sekigahara. You're lying. Uh, Brian's saying that he got four days off. That's awesome. Mr. Ida. For you to ask for me personally, I can't tell you how happy it made me. I've been waiting. I need you to look at this. An interlocutor update? Code DD426. The nanomachines within you. There is a flaw in the program. It is inhibiting you from unlocking the full extent of their power. But there exists a code to fix it. A flaw? If we implement this, the Sentinel's capabilities will increase greatly. Mori Morrison, however, does not agree. Why? She believes the Sentinels are more than capable as they are. Ugh. Why is she like that? She's always going against you, Mr. Ida. If only everyone was as understanding as you. I want us to give this code a try. It'll be our little secret, of course. And then, Morimura-san will see who was right. All you have to do is put this code into the Sentinel. Okay, I'll do it. So, so, they think Shinonome did it, but in fact, she was instructed to do so by Ida. And this also raises another separate question. 426 has been introduced to us as a prisoner number for somebody who is introduced as being Juro Izumi. But the code is named DD426, which is either a shocking coincidence or like the code itself is the Juro Izumi personality and that's what the infection is. I mean, like, we're gonna try to figure this out, but that seems to be what's going on. An improvement to the Sentinel, huh? Ryoko-san, what was Ida talking to you about? Nothing that concerns you. Guess I'm still just some kid that lives nearby, huh? Hey, Kun. A fourth wave is approaching. We need to get ready. I'll put DD-426 into number 14. Or... I'll put it into number 15. Akun Sentinel. Mr. Ida's right. And now, Akun will know it too. Do you remember? After you shifted, you went missing. It took a long time to get you back. 
when we finally did, your condition was already terminal. We've been able to keep it at bay with the medication, but the destruction of your memories has already begun. For you, we tried to reinforce your memories with nanomachines, but it hasn't gone well. We thought if we let you roam free, that your memories would stabilize. However, your memories kept failing. It only made you become further detached from reality. Even still, it is imperative that you remember. Only you can clear the infection within the Sentinels. Because only you know the password. We don't have much time. Please, you must remember. Stop! It's all my fault. It can't be. Oh boy. Sorry, but Fault is doing a lot of work there. She was tricked. That's different from being at Fault. You're awake. Who are you? Try and remember. Akon? That's right. I... I can't remember my name. Ryoko Shinonome. Is that my name? It doesn't sound familiar. Oh, right. I need to find... What was I looking for again? I can't remember. You don't have to anymore. You don't have to look for anything, Ryoko-san. More importantly, how are you feeling? I feel... good. Refreshed. Peaceful, even. Maybe it's just not possible. The nanomachines linked to her memory have all separated. She barely has any memories left. <sighs> the memories you implanted in her. What are they? We did the same for all of you. When you were connected to the learning devices, you gained the knowledge needed to control the sentinels and the gates. Those memories were backed up in case there was an accident. So she has her memories of what happened before the incident? No, not all of them. We only backed up those which pertain to learning. So all she knows is how to control the Sentinel. Ryoko-san. The password to remove the infection. Gone, along with the rest of her memories. We can no longer rely on the Sentinels. So that's it? You're giving up? There is still one way to use the Sentinels. No. Further exposure to the infection. And there's no guarantee you'll survive. He's not talking about himself. After everything you've taken from her, it still isn't enough. I won't let you put her in the Sentinel. No. No, Akun. Sentinel number 14. It was made just for me, by Mr. Ida. It's my Sentinel. Ryoko-san. I won't let anyone else fight for me. Okay, that's it. Um, oh, and we can do uh, Tomiki Suragi now. Um, yeah. Um, so let's let's pause there. So so Patikin was saying I totally forgot about the Fall Guys. 
Jungle Book collaboration starting tomorrow. A new event as well, and it'll need all the outfits. Oh, you're not going to have any trouble getting that, because uh, for anybody that doesn't know, Patikin wins all the time. Secondly, like... That's sad as shit. Like, that, that whole sequence there. Um... Ryoko feels a tremendous amount of responsibility for something that if she could remember in full, she was tricked into installing this code by Mr. Ida, a character that she has nothing but love and admiration for, and he specifically played on that to trick her into installing this malicious code, and, like, they all think that she has the password. She might or she might not. Um, but what is really driving it home is just the the presentation of somebody who is withering away at all points in the story. Throughout Ryoko's story, we've talked a lot about just the, the frequency with which she has to take her pills and, and how bad it is. And it's sort of been played for humor that it's it's every few minutes that she has to pop more pills. but. Now we can see that at the end of that, she's just basically wiped clean and left with nothing except the memory of how to pilot the Sentinel and the fact that Mr. Ida made it for her. She can't even remember the fact that to anyone else's perception, she got tricked into betraying everybody. And when I was watching that, I was just thinking about like, a real world phenomenon uh, for people who have Alzheimer's is called like uh, sundowning. And that as the, the sun is going down, as it gets later in the day, sometimes people that are suffering from advanced forms of Alzheimer's will become very agitated. And I've, I've seen it theorized. And if any of this information is poorly stated or out of date, then I apologize. But I've seen it theorized that what's happening is that as the sun is going down and the, the day is getting late, they are, uh, there's sort of, sort of like an instinct that's develop, developed over time that they need to get home. They need to get home to their kids, to their families, to whatever it is, or, or, or possibly um, just get to work or whatever, that there's a, a change in time and there's this vestigial memory of like, I have to, I have to be somewhere else. and. I frequently think about this because that's sort of the way that a lot of my life is structured, looking at the clock and realizing when I have to be somewhere or sometimes feeling urgency, like when I wake up very, very early in the morning and like what gets me motivated is uh, I got to get out of here. Like I'll, I'll say this to myself and it'll be the thought in my head, I, I have to get out of here. Um, and that's sort of like... I can be tired, I can complain, I can feel like wanting to sit home and just be a lump, but I have to go. There's responsibilities and there's people that are counting on me. And sometimes I think about what if later on in life I begin to fall victim? I, I'll say with some sort of like clarity that fortunately Alzheimer's has not run in my family, but there can be exceptions to that rule. And I feel like the way that my life is structured would be very vulnerable to that sundowning. And I just think a lot about having this sense that you need to be somewhere, you need to go do something. There's something I'm supposed to be doing, but you can't even remember what it is. And you're left only with that unfocused directionless urgency that you can't shake and you can't resolve. And yeah, that would be very agitating. Uh, Sam Lander's saying we gotta get out of this place if it's the last thing we ever do. Um, is that a, it sounds like a reference or a quote and I don't, I don't recognize it offhand. I am, yeah. Oh gosh, there is something we're supposed to do at eight o'clock. I guys, I think I have to stop. It's a song reference. I don't recognize the song offhand. I think I'm out of time. God, I want to do more Tomi Kisaragi. Uh, what we'll do is aim at uh, doing the next Tomi Kisaragi story chapter uh, next time because we uh, unlocked that semi-accidentally. I didn't realize that that's where that was going to go. But yeah, what we'll do is hit save and go in here. And yes. So on our way out, before, before people jump out and say, oh, the stream is over, before you go, um, we are hitting, it is uh, the very beginning of September, and that means that we are now two months out from when the, I need to turn this down slightly, 
we are about two months out from when the Extra Life Children's Charity Marathon is going to be happening here on Twitch and on major websites like hopefully GameSpot and Game Informer and MinMax and, and many, many others. Giant Bomb, hopefully, uh, hopefully uh, Nextlander. There's a lot of places that um, participate in this. Now, if we are very, very fortunate, we will have the opportunity to do a charity marathon stream as we did last year, alongside people like Mia and Chivalry and Drienne Lavode, and maybe there will be others that participate either on their own from the general Twitch community or with us in some way. Uh, the plans have not been finalized, but this little speech here, uh, and I'm not going to say that I'm going to do this for every stream between now and then, is just to ask people to consider that between now and then, if the only thing you did was you put put aside $2 a week, you just took $2 and you put them in a drawer, $2 a week, that'd be $16. We're about eight weeks out right now. That'd be $16. If you just took 10 of those, like you don't even have to take the whole amount. If you just took 10 of those and you submitted that during the Extra Life Marathon to a stream of your choice, it could be us, it could be anybody. Um, if everybody watching this right now just set aside five or ten dollars between now and early November and, and chipped in, we could shatter records for the Extra Life Children's Charity Marathon. If you're not familiar with what it is, it is a, a charity that takes place here on Twitch and on YouTube, and it is to raise money for the uh, Children's Miracle Network. These are hospitals that specialize in treating children that have uh, any number of different conditions, uh, congenital bone bone defects, um, lupus, cancer, um, any number of things. And there's so many resources out there. So please do not mistake my lack of articulation on this as any sort of vagary about what the charity does and what it accomplishes. And the biggest event in all of gaming every single year is not E3, it's not Gamescom, it's not the Future Game Show, it's not the Sony, it's Extra Life. It's Extra Life every year. By, by a wide margin, and I felt extremely honored to be able to participate in it last year, and I hope that people watching this uh, now or in the future will consider just um, setting aside a little bit that they can donate. And I will open this up, and I will put uh, our money where our mouth is. Uh, we are very, very fortunate to have people who subscribe to us here on Twitch, but I will invite anybody that wants to save a little bit of extra money to put it towards Extra Life to please consider removing your subscription from our channel and taking that money and putting it towards Extra Life. Uh, to recap something that uh, my producer put last year, uh, we would we would like it if you donated through us to when we if we do a charity, but we would love it if you would donate to somebody. Anybody that you like here on Twitch, anybody that's doing one of those charity marathons, all of the money donated through extralife.org goes directly to the charity, 100% of every dollar. So I just wanted to put that out there and maybe start talking a little bit about it from here and there as we go forward, because it would mean the world to us if we were able to inspire inspire people to consider donating to the charity. So with that, we're going to go ahead and find somebody fun to raid. Uh, thank you guys very, very much. Thank you to um, uh, both Chivalry and Mia. And I want to say that, yes, Patikin also resubscribed. You guys, thank you very, very, very much. Uh, again, if you... Um, you know, there's two months between now and Extra Life, so I just wanted to start putting that out there and to make people um, aware. Um... <laughs> did Patekin saying out of time get your DeLorean to get some more time uh, and Sam Lander saying the song is the animals we gotta get out of this place Sam Lander there is a high degree chance that I would recognize it if I heard it but I've always been bad with song titles so let's take a quick look here and we're going to do a raid over to yeah let's do a raid over to uh, the Fox fam the Fox fam is currently playing League of Legends uh, I'm just gonna very quickly check to make sure that she's online um, but, yep, and she just started relatively recently, so if you are interested in MOBAs whatsoever, I haven't seen the Fox fam play 
uh, League of Legends yet, but I am a, uh, I really enjoy playing Heroes of the Storm. I've never actually played League of Legends, but I've watched some, and let's head over and see that. Uh, again, thank you also. Did, did Carolina also raid? It's okay either way, but I just want to make sure that I'm not forgetting anybody. Yes, he did. Okay, so let's very uh, quickly recap. Um, Sam Melander hosted, and thank you very, very much for that. Uh, Patikin has resubscribed. More than Amia resubscribed. Caroluna had raided over. And I think that covers most of the events for today, but Chivalry had also resubscribed before the start of the stream. So again, a big, big thanks to all of you um, and anybody who even thinks about subscribing. Uh, again, it's a it's a big damn deal and it's a big honor. And Caroluna, Patikin, um, Oh gosh, there was somebody else we were watching earlier today as well. You guys were doing great streams. Before we go, uh, best wishes to Tashir. I understand that he is continuing to recover. Caroluna, uh, good luck with your second COVID shot tomorrow. Um, know that even if it um, comes with some aches and pains, it is well worth it. And we are out of time. Until next time, you guys, thank you so much. And I hope you have a great night.